This is a video on factoring by grouping. Uh, the first thing you want to notice when you're factoring by grouping is that you're going to use this only when you factor an expression that contains four terms. So that's what's really tipping you off to using this method. Uh, I'm going to start with an example and then later on I'll take you through a step-by-step -step process. So our example says to factor ax plus ay plus bx plus by. And when you're factoring, the first thing you should always look for is a greatest common factor. And you need a greatest common factor for the entire expression. In this case, we have ax plus ay plus bx plus by. All four terms do not have a common factor. There's nothing that we can factor out of all four of them. This is where factoring by grouping comes into play. If you can't factor anything out of all four terms, what you really want to do is you want to factor something out of each set of two. So you're going to make two groups of two. All right, so we had a first group of two and a second group of two here. And from the first group of two, we're going to factor out a GCF equal to, well, AX and AY, the only factor they have in common is A. So we're going to factor out a GCF of A here. And for the second group of two, BX and BY, the only factor they have in common is B. So we're going to factor out B here. And so for factoring this out, this is going to be equal to, from the first group, I'm factoring out A, and then in my parentheses, what's left over? If I factor out an A from AX, I'm really dividing out the A, so you're left with X. Plus AY, factoring out an A, it means you're really dividing out an A. You got X plus Y in parentheses there. And now we're going to factor a B out of the second group. Now, since this is a positive B, right, and it's based off of this sign being a positive, all right, it's always the first one there. Uh, since we're factoring out a positive b, we're going to write plus b. So the sign comes along with what you're factoring out, and it's based all on that first sign. So I'm factoring out b, and then in my parentheses, you're just dividing it out. A positive bx divided by b leaves you with just x. And factoring out a b from by, you're really just dividing it out. By divided by b, you're just left with plus y. Once you're here, now we've got two terms, right? This is all one term, and this is all one term. So factoring out what they have in common now, you're looking for a GCF between the two terms we have left, they have an x plus y in common, right? a times x plus y plus b times x plus y, they have an x plus y in common. So we're going to factor that out. That's like the GCF of this group here. So that GCF is going to be x plus y from these two terms. That's what they have in common. So we're going to factor x plus y out here to the front. And then if I factor out x plus y, we want our second set of parentheses to have whatever's left over inside of it. So we're going to have just a plus b. The way I like to think about this is I say, okay, what matches between the two terms? Well, x plus y matches. That's going to go in front. What's left over? a plus b. That's going to go in your next set of parentheses. Once we've done that, we factored it. Remember, when you're factoring, you want things to be multiplied together, and these are multiplied together. Uh, this is a very general example. I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process, and then we'll do a couple more. So our steps for factoring by grouping. And remember, it's very important that you do this only when you have four terms. All right, so that's what's telling you to use this method. All right, so our first step says determine if there's a GCF for the entire expression. If so, factor it out. In the last one, there wasn't. But if there's a GCF common to all four terms, you want to factor that out to the front first and then follow the rest of the steps uh, for the remaining part of the factoring. Step two, arrange the four terms into two groups of two terms each. Each group must have a GCF. This is what we did uh, when we said, OK, the first group, had, first group of two, the AX plus AY, had a GCF of A, and the second group had a GCF of B. Step three was factor out the GCF from each group of two. And that's what we did when we had A out in front times X plus Y. And then plus we factored B out in front times X plus Y. And then if the two terms formed in step three have a GCF, then factor it out. This is where we factored out the X plus Y to the front. And then our second set of parentheses had whatever was left over, the A plus B. So let's take a look at another example. We're asked to factor x squared plus 6x minus 4x minus 24. When you're looking at this, first you should notice, you know, is there a GCF for the whole thing? And when I say GCF for the whole thing, I mean a GCF other than 1. And right now we don't have a greatest common factor other than 1 for all four terms, so we can't worry about that. The fact that we have four terms tells us that we're factoring by grouping. So I'm going to take that first group of 2 and the second group of 2. And from this first group of two, I'm going to factor out a GCF of x. 
right? Because x squared has a factor of x, and so does 6x. So the first, uh, so the greatest common factor here is going to be x. For the second group of two, we got negative 4x minus 24. All right, so if I'm looking at negative 4x and a minus 24, what they have in common, you really want to base it off of, you know, the numbers here first. There are no x's in the second one, so you can't factor out an x, but 4 and 24 have a greatest common factor of 4. And since this first term is negative, and it's all based on this first term, it has nothing to do with the second one, since this first term is negative, we're going to factor out a GCF of negative 4. So this is going to be equal to factoring out an x out of the first group of 2. We're going to factor x out in front. And really, remember, when you factor out something, you're really dividing it out of each term. So x squared divided by x is going to leave me with an x here, plus 6x divided by x you're going to be left with plus 6. And now, right here, we're going to put whatever my GCF was for my second uh, my second set of two. Remember, you have to take the sign with it, and it's all based off of that sign. So this is a negative 4, so we're going to put minus 4 here. And then our parentheses, remember, you're dividing it out. So it's a negative 4x divided by a negative 4. That's going to leave us with a positive x, right? A negative divided by a negative gives you a positive. Negative 4 over negative 4 gives you 1. The x just doesn't divide by anything, so it's going to stay there. And then negative 24 divided by negative 4. Well, negative divided by negative, that's going to make that a positive well, so it's going to be a plus 6. Once you're here, now you want to see what uh, both terms have in common. Remember, this is all one term now, and this is all one term. And they have an x plus 6 in common, so that's our GCF that comes out front. So we're bringing x plus 6 out to the front, because that's what they have in common. Then my second set of parentheses, whatever was left over, x minus 4. All right, and it's important to have parentheses here, because you're showing that you're multiplying these together. Uh, once I'm here, I'm done. I've actually factored it. I have two things that are being multiplied together. Remember, that's your goal when you're factoring, is to have things that are being multiplied. And you could always check this by foiling. All right, and to check this by foiling, you know, you would distribute through to each piece, and then you would see that you would get these exact same terms. Uh, let's take a look at one more. All right, so we're going to factor 6x minus 15xy plus 8y minus 20y squared. All right, so again, the first thing you should do is look for a GCF for the entire problem if one exists. In this case, 6x, uh, negative 15xy, 8y, and negative 20y squared, they all don't have a common factor. So you can't factor out a GCF from the whole thing. Since we have four terms, all right, we're going to use factoring by grouping. So that's our first group of two. That's our second group of two. And we're looking for a GCF from each group. Uh, first, I would look at the numbers. 6 and 15 have a GCF of 3, right? 3 is a common factor to both 6 and 15. And then look at the variables. Well, x and x, well, they have an x in common. There are no y's in the first term. There is a y over here in the second term. Since it's not in the first term, though, you can't factor it out. So the GCF for the first group is going to be 3x. For the second group, we've got 8 and 20. They have a common factor of 4. And then y and y squared, well, they have a common factor of y. So the GCF for that second group is going to be 4y. It's positive because the front sign of it is positive. That's what tells you the sign to use. So now let's factor uh, the GCF from each group. So we're going to have 3x times, and then in the parentheses here, remember, you're going to just divide out the GCF from each term. That's how you're going to figure out what's left in the parentheses. So 6x divided by 3x just leaves you with a positive 2, right? 6 divided by 3 is 2. x divided by x, they cancel out to a 1. So we just have 2. And then minus 15 divided by 3 makes this a minus 5. x divided by x cancels out, and then you're just left with minus 5y. Here we're going to write a positive 4y, because that first sign's positive, so we need a positive here. So this is plus 4y. And then parentheses, 8y divided by 4y is going to just give us 2, right? 8 divided by 4 is 2. y divided by y cancels to a 1, so we just have 2 there. And then minus 20 divided by 4 is going to be a negative 5. y squared divided by y is just a y. Once we're here, now we've got two terms, all right, and we want to take what, ha what they have in common. So what matches between this term and this term? Well, they have 2 minus 5y in common. We're going to write that out in front. Make sure you keep the parentheses around it. And then your second set of parentheses, since you're factoring inside of each, you're going to be left with 3x and a plus 4y. So 3x plus 4y. Remember, you need those parentheses there because that signifies that you're multiplying. And that's it. Then you're done. You're multiplying these together, so you factored it. Um, to check this, remember, you can always distribute through by foiling and making sure you get the original expression. All right, here's one for you to try on your own.